Welcome and thank you for joining me on this informational webinar, Myopia, a parent's guide to stopping your child's eyesight from getting worse. Most likely you were watching this video because you were told or your child was told has myopia. And today I'll be reviewing six major elements in understanding myopia. Those elements are what exactly is myopia, the causes of myopia, and how you can tell if your child has myopia, what complications are caused by myopia. We'll also be reviewing how we can treat myopia. And lastly, what can we do today now to slow down your child's progression of myopia. Before we get started, who am I and why should you be listening to me? Well, I'm the brother of two siblings, and when we were growing up, I accompanied my parents, along with my brother and sister, to the eye doctor about three to eight times per year. And each visit, my sister had to get new, thicker glasses. And I remember asking my mom every visit, why does Monica need more medicine in her glasses so many times? You know, by the time she was five, she had like Coke bottle glasses. And there was never an answer that made sense to me at that age. So at the young age of 12, I decided I was going to figure this out, what was happening and how I can stop it from getting worse. I'm also the father of twins, Sabrina and Shile, who at the age of eight developed myopia and I started myopia management therapy for them immediately. And at the time of this video, they are now 21 years old and still have the same vision as when they did at eight years of age practicing what I'm about to teach you here in this video. And yes, finally, I'm your eye doctor. I'm Dr. Stephen Chander. I serve as the clinical director for Chicago's largest myopia management center, and I also frequently provide information seminars and lectures for my colleagues on this topic of myopia management. I'm certified by several companies and specialment of myopia management treatments, as well as a consultant to several myopia management healthcare companies. Today, my goal is to teach parents and patients about a very silent disease that threatens eyesight. Wait, did Dr. C just call wearing eyeglasses a disease? Well, not exactly, but wearing glasses corrects a symptom, that symptom of blurred vision when correcting long distance vision, glasses are correcting the symptom of myopia. So what's the big deal? Millions of people wear glasses to correct symptoms, don't they? So I realize this is a pretty bold statement that my child went in to see the eye doctor because I noticed she was squinting and I knew she needed glasses, but Dr. Chander is saying this, has, this is a disease? Well, let's review the definition of a disease. The Oxford Dictionary defines a disease as a disorder a disorder of a structure or function in a human, animal, or plant, especially that produces specific signs or symptoms that affect specific location and is not a direct result of a physical injury. A disease is a progressive disorder that is a disease or condition that gets worse over time and in general decline in health or function. So when we look at the word myopia, it involves a structure, the eye, and we cannot see far, that's the symptom of the disorder. And it is progressive. Glasses get higher in power, eyesight worsens over time and declines. We've never met a 50 year old who has the same eyesight as they did when they were nine. This leads to a very serious condition, both early and late in life, such as retinal detachments, which causes blindness, glaucoma, which causes blindness, cataracts, loss of vision, and retinal thinning, which can lead to weak retina, which can lead to a detachment. So what is myopia? Basically, the eye is too big. That's what myopia is. The axial length, that's what matters. So when discussing eye prescriptions of their child in an exam room, I found that parents want to know how much did their eyesight, child's eyesight worse or worsen, almost as if they're expecting this disease to cause the natural degradation of their child's vision. What did we do to prevent the eyesight from getting worse? And the answer is, what did we do to stop the axial length? And by asking the doctor, what's my child's axial length and how does it compare to the norm? 
that's when we can really get to the brunt of stopping the children's eyesight from getting worse. Myopia causes poor long distance vision. Either the eye is too big, which is longer, or the cornea is too curved or too steep. The symptom of this disease, as I mentioned, is blurred vision. A diopter is the unit of measure of the correction or the focus power your lens requires to see clearly. The higher the diopter, the higher the myopia. So why does this matter? Well, short term, school sports, learning, all of that can be affected uh, with poor eyesight. In the long term, as much as 67% of blinding disorders occur in myopic patients, including retinal detachments, retinal degeneration, cataracts, glaucoma, just to name a few of the serious issues that occur in these patients. So a few stats to really remember. One is that vision problems start between the ages of 6 and 12. So regular examination um, is very important in uh, the elementary school years. There's a 25% chance that a child will develop myopia if just one parent is myopic. That number actually doubles to 50% chance if both parents are myopic. Right now in the U.S., and this is the take-home, there's 40% of kids that have myopia compared to only 20% about three decades ago. So again, in summary, classically we have not thought of myopia as a disease, but based on the latest science, we really should. You yourself may be myopic or nearsighted. And like I mentioned earlier, you know, what's really the big deal? I wore glasses when I was a child or when I was my child's age, and yes, it kept on changing until my eyes stopped growing. Or maybe you feel uh, that this type of handicap is something that can be corrected with laser eye surgery. And maybe you did have laser eye surgery and now you can see amazing. And my child will have the same or better options. Well, my response is the same as if it would be if the patient said, what's the big deal about being pre-diabetic? Patients uh, have to watch what they eat, when they eat. They have to control their sugar levels. Um, and not only do they have to control their sugar levels, but stick their finger with a needle, watch themselves bleed, and make measurements. It's really not a lifestyle that I think is very conducive or necessarily a lot of fun. But myopia has the very similar elements to it. You can have laser eye surgery, but still have the elements of what the disease impact has in being progressively myopic or increasing prescription. And those are sight-threatening diseases that we see all the time in our clinic. And again, over 67% of those patients are in fact myopic or nearsighted. So we must intervene now as each day, each month, there's an increase in the axial length causing irreversible changes in your child's eyesight. So what causes myopia? There are a couple of elements that cause myopia that we know of, and that is genetics, screen time, less spent time outdoors, and obviously a combination of all of these are what perpetuates the worsening of the child's eyesight. So how can I tell if my child has myopia? The bottom line is, is a comprehensive examination is the very best way to determine if your child's axial length, the size of their eye, is at risk for developing myopia. If your child is seeing 20-20 but has a big eye, there's a large chance of myopic progression and this can actually be prevented. Does myopia cause other complications? No doubt that myopia causes other complications as we've discussed in the slides uh, previous. It is the risk factor in these complications that essentially increases by 100 times in some cases. And that really amazes me that we as a medical society are essentially putting a bandage on this by prescribing glasses or thinking it's normal for changes to occur. But take a look at this. At a moderate low prescription, there is about a two times increase in central loss or my myopic maculopathy. But take a look here at how this dramatically increases in moderate to high myopia prescriptions. Remember, if your child starts at minus two, 
there's a chance that with continued axial length or normal eye growth, that the child will end up over minus eight, increasing changes of major eye diseases to over 125 times. That alone is remarkable enough to immediately take action and start and initiate treatment. So glasses are definitely not the answer. Again, that's treating the symptom of the disease, which is blurry vision. We must talk and teach our kids about nutrition, outdoor time increase, and initiate treatment like we would as if they were diagnosed with a major problem like diabetes, because myopia is a major problem. If you're watching this video, it's because you, your child, have been diagnosed with myopia. And again, we feel that that's a major problem. The bottom line is glasses are just simply not enough. So what can we do today to slow down the rate of myopia? Right away, an actionable kind of step uh, that would we can implement you know, right now is to forcibly maybe increase outdoor time. Sunlight exposure lowers the chances of nearsightedness in our kids. When working on computers, we always advise our patients, adults and children, to practice the 20-20-20 rule, and that is for every 20 minutes, you take a 20 second break and look at something 20 feet away. Plans for treatments, and you know, there are several approaches to treating myopia. Each are effective. Some are a bit more effective than others, but the bottom line is starting one of these therapies immediately is what's gonna help slow down that axial length that we talked about, the eye being too big. So we will discuss what's called atropine therapy, extended depth of focus contact lenses. We'll also be talking about retainer lenses, which by the way, I put my twins in at the age of eight and their prescription hadn't changed over that 13 year period of time. We'll talk about axial length monitoring several times during the year and also myopia control glasses. So atropine, what is it? Low dose atropine works basically to limit the eye stretching or elongation. It actually slows down uh, the eye growth in an eye that's already too big. So this is a nightly eye drop that is compounded. So it's not something available just over the counter. The pharmacist actually actually formulate that for us based on the axial length. It has very little side effects. And on a side note, my nephew Logan is currently using low dose atropine to slow down his myopia. The retainer contact lenses or orthokeratology lenses, these are lenses, contact lenses that we actually put in our eyes at bedtime, patient sleeps normally. Overnight, the lenses gently shape the front part of the eye, which is called the cornea. Removing the lenses in the morning and then being able to see clearly all day without the use of any glasses or contact lenses. So in summary, simply stated, the contact lenses are inserted at bedtime. When you wake up in the morning, you remove their lenses and your vision is totally clear. No glasses or contact lenses are needed to wear to see clearly. And this is available both for adults and children. The um, extended depth of focus contacts, these are daytime contact lenses that help to create what's called peripheral defocus, which also slows down the axial length. These are available as hybrid retainer lenses and daily throwaway lenses are very effective in decreasing the rapid change in what's called the axial length or slowing down the eye growth, preventing the increases in myopia or nearsightedness. And then we have what are called myopia controlled glasses. So a lot of my patients are wearing similar lenses. Uh, the MyoSmart myopia control lenses have been made by a company called Hoya, clinically proven to reduce the rate of myopia or nearsightedness progression in up to about 59% and the axial length elongation of the eye by about 60%. And the findings of these studies were published in the British Journal of Ophthalmology and Actually, all of these things that we're discussing, I can put in the links below if you're the clinical type of person who likes to see these studies. So in summary, there's no safe level of myopia, whether you're a minus 0.5 or minus 5.0. Myopia is a disease that uh, demands our attention and our children deserve treatment for this condition. 
Glasses are simply not the treatment. It never made sense to me to keep increasing one's prescription until the eye stops growing. The short-term impacts include performance in the academics, athletics, and arts. But the long-term health consequences uh, of early cataracts, glaucoma, or retinal detachment, and other blinding disorders are really what compounded me to put this webinar together. So if you found this video helpful, take the next step in a holistic approach to managing myopia. Together, my patients, my colleagues in the eye care world and also the World Health Organization, we're making great strides creating evidence-based, kind of easy to implement treatment solutions for your child so that we can fight myopia on the front lines right now. Waiting only increases your child's axial length, causing unnecessary weakening of your child's eyesight. And remember, if anything, always look at the bright side of life. Again, my name is Dr. Stephen Chander. I'm happy to take any questions, my personal email, my personal cell phone number. You can contact me at the office from the information that you see here on this particular slide. Once again, thank you for taking the time to learn about myopia and how to stop your child's eyesight from worsening. Until next time, I'll see you then. Enjoy the rest of your day.